Welcome to Bogosox TV. We've got lots of classic and original TV shows. Subscribe now and enjoy the video. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Jemima and I were making a wild and scary animal park with our wild and scary animals. <laughs> Is Bob the Shark wild and scary enough, do you think? I don't think so, Grandpa. Well, it could be. <laughs> I think we need some more animals. Just then, the doorbell rang. I ran to answer it, and who should be standing there? Hi! Bubbles! Bubbles the babysitter! Bubbles is always great fun. Sometimes we make things. Sometimes we play bat and ball. Sometimes we do face painting. And today, guess what she brought with her? He wanted to see my best friends right away! Oh, come on, Bubbles sweet. took her new little friend out of its basket. It was so cute! Ah, oh, Bubbles! And who's this? He's called Squeak! <laughs> so this was the day we all got to play with... Bubbles and Squeak! Oh dear! I think Wolfie's a bit scared of Squeaky. He probably thinks he's wild and scary. Just as well it's time for his walk then. Come in with me, Jason. Yes, please. I need to get some monkeys from Mr. Whip's shop. We must have more monkeys. So off I went with Dad and Wolfie. I hope Grandpa wouldn't put on his shrinking cap and shrink while I was out. You know what happens when he does. He does this. And this. And this. Catch me if you can! He can get up to all kinds of mischief. He can get in my car and make it go. He can chuff around in our Sunny Sands train. He can even fly off in my plane. But Grandpa only ever shrinks when he thinks there's a problem. And with Bubbles and Squeak, of course there wouldn't be a problem. But just then... I came round the back! A problem turned up. Floyd. Floyd lives in the house opposite, and he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch! He loves playing jokes. Boo! 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 And he always wants everything his own way. Grandpa agrees with me. Floyd is a big, spoiled show-off. Check out my new skateboard. What is that? It's Squeak! <laughs> Kittens are stupid pets. Squeak is not a stupid pet. He's a wild and scary cat. And he's going to be part of our wild and scary animal park. Nice one, Grandpa. <gasps> Actually, I've got loads of wild and scary pets. You need to see them. Wait right there. Floyd, we really don't need to see anything wild and scary. <laughs> oh no, he's gone. Grandpa, being Grandpa, had an idea. Well, Squeak, I think Bubbles is going to need a bit of help with that boy, Floyd. He took out his shrinking cap, and to Squeak's amazement, Grandpa shrank. He hid on the shelf, just as Jemima and Bubbles came back. Grandpa must have gone for a little lie down. Whenever Grandpa shrinks, everyone thinks he's gone for a little lie down. Oh, you're back in your basket, Squeak. I'm back! Wanna see my 
my rat. Do I want to see your rat? Uh, no thanks. Oh, uh, go on. No, I really, really, really don't want to see your rat. Just a peep. Whoa! That was only a toy rat. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but it still made Bubbles jump, and Grandpa was cross. Come in the garden. One of my other wild pets is out there. Too wild to bring inside. Come on. He's only playing tricks, Bubbles. Yes, but you know me. I'm not very good at tricks. Oh. Tricks, eh? Well, we'll see about tricks. He's in this plant, tipped over very quietly because he's asleep. And if you wake him up, he gets really, really wild. Bubbles knew that Floyd was just going to play a trick with some kind of fake pet, but she was still really nervous. At that moment, Grandpa ran out of the kitchen and hid. Are you there, Simon? Simon? Simon. Yeah, he's my um, snake. <gasps> of course, Bubbles knew that Simon was a plastic snake, but she hated being chased. Oh, I hate being chased! <laughs> Stop it, Floyd, she hates being chased! Then, Grandpa came out of his hiding place and got up onto the table. Don't tell anyone I'm here, Squeak. I'm going to hide round the back. Chasing you, Bubbles. Is it? Oh, good. You'd hate to be chased like that. <laughs> Chasing doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me. Come on, Bubbles. Let's go and get a drink. <laughs> Floyd went up to squeak, and Grandpa got ready to put his plan into action. Well, hi there, Wildcat. You're really scary, aren't you? Ha! Floyd turned his back on Squeak again, but this time Grandpa went... Meow! Was that you yowling? Trying to make me jump, are you? Ha! No chance. Grandpa's first plan hadn't worked, so he jumped off the table and ran towards the pond. He saw the shell and that gave him an idea. Floyd? There's nothing the matter with me, but there's something the matter with your kitten. It yowled at me! Yow! Bubbles and Jemima dashed outside to see if Squeak was okay. And of course, Squeak was fine. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> but I think he might be better off inside. With Bubbles and Jemima out of the way, Floyd suddenly spotted the big shell. Hey, cool shell! I could pretend there's a wild animal in that! <gasps> there actually is a wild animal in it! Brilliant! Hey, Bubbles! Oh, I see. You're trying to scare me now, are you? Nothing scares me. And that was the moment I arrived home with Dad and Beowulf. Floyd, fancy seeing you here. Are you okay? Yes, but guess what? There's a wild animal in that shell. I'm going to get bubbles. One of his jokes, I suppose. Come on, Wolfie. I knew that this was probably not one of Floyd's jokes. And I knew who the wild animal would be. Oh, yes. Grandpa! I had to. Floyd has been trying to make Bubbles jump, and I've been trying to make him jump back. But it hasn't worked. I'm going to try one more thing. I have to get into the pond, and you have to get inside and fetch me the shark. This time, Grandpa was about to go too far. Come and see! There really is a wild animal in that shell! While Floyd was trying to persuade Bubbles and Jemima to come outside, I ran into the sitting room. No more jokes, Floyd! It's not a joke! I got Grandpa what he needed and ran back into the garden. Come on, there's a wild animal outside! Come on! Floyd, come here! Quick, come quick! I'll be back. I saw something move in the pond! What? It's probably our shark. Your shark? He's very small, but he's very 
fierce. <gasps> Grandpa's plan was working. He was underwater, making my plastic shark move. Just when Floyd was really close, Grandpa made this happen. <laughs> <laughs> While Floyd ran inside, I fished Grandpa out of the pond as quickly as I could. I'm so sorry I tried to scare you. I was only joking. But now I know what it feels like now that that shark made me jump out of my skin. Hey! So Jason played a trick on you for once, eh, Floyd? I guess so. But I won't play another joke again, I promise. It's okay, Floyd. I shouldn't let your jokes bother me. They are only jokes, after all. <laughs> yeah. Wanna see my spider? Oh, um, uh, yes. While everyone was laughing at Bubbles, stroking a plastic spider... So brave! <laughs> I took Grandpa in my pocket to the sitting room. Cap off, Grandpa, quick! Well, Jason, I don't think Floyd will try any of those tricks on Bubbles again, do you? No, Grandpa! We did it! Teamwork, I say! Teamwork! <laughs> Here we are. More monkeys. Oh, just the job, Jason. Grandpa, your cap's all wet. Is it? Oh, of course. That's because I've been swimming with the sharks. Why don't you relax in a tub of Boohoo Bubble Bath? Hmm. Oh, you never know what's in Boohoo Bubble Bath. You're right there. Remember that time, Boris? <gasps> I do, I do. Oh, let me tell them, let me tell them. OK. <sighs> well, this is all about Boris. So... It all started up at Chateau Shampoo. Someone had been shopping. Can you guess who? Boris Boohoo, what's he gonna do? Who? And Boris was quite excited about it. We were watching from our hidey pipes. Harbawa. Boris had bought Harbawa. three huge cans of bristly beans. Harbawa. Harbawa. He showed them to Boise. Ah. Boris had plans for these beans. Money making plans. Oh, neat. Plans to make bristly bean bubble bath. Relax, relax, get all your troubles. Climb the 
Needed Boise's help. The bubble bath making was about to begin. Because this was the day of bubbles and beans. But someone else in Hairyland was busy making something. It was Nana outside her arty den. Nana's always making something. Well, you know what she's like. Nana's a Hairyland artist Nana can draw like a dream She can spray, she can glue She can do collage too And sometimes she paints with ice cream Yes, ice cream! Nana's always laughing But if she goes to far She lifts off her toes And up she goes Yes, up goes Nana Up goes Nana Up goes Nana And today, Nana had made this. A wacky water fountain. <laughs> made out of old bottles, all collected by Pa. Pa thought Nana's wacky water fountain was wonderful. <laughs> and so did Nana. Lily Lally more. But it wasn't finished yet. Pa wanted Ma to see the wacky water fountain, so off he went to find her. Now, back in the factory at Chateau Shampoo. Boris and Boise had been hard at work, and now the bristly beans were just a tub of hairy orange gunge. <laughs> But Boris Bubba. needed one extra Bubba. thing to make his bristly bean bubble bath bubble. Water! And he told Boise to turn on the tap. But Chateau Shampoo had run out of water. There wasn't a drop left. No water, no bubbles. No bubbles, no money. Oh. Boris had to get water from somewhere. He needed a plan. Boris needs a plan, a plan. He needs a plan as quick as he can. He needs a plan. He needs it quick. He needs ah. a plan, a clever trick. What'll it be? What'll it be? What'll it be? And Boris's plan was to go to the curly swirly meadow and get the water from Ringlet River. <laughs> we came along to watch and landed in the whiskey wobbly tree. Boise poured some water in and sure enough, the bubble bath started to bubble. It doesn't get any better now it's bubbly, does it? Ew. But just then, who should come along but... Minnie Ha Ha and Chihuahua Ha Ha. And when Boise saw Minnie, he said... <laughs> Minnie asked Boise to help her take Chihuahua for a walk. And Boise never said no to Minnie, so off he went. Leaving Boris feeling very cross and rather wet. Boo! We decided to go and see Nana's wacky water fountain. in her hairy apple tree. <laughs> Nana loved her fountain. She sat down to admire it from her bushy bed. But she was so tired, she fell asleep. But there was trouble ahead. Boris was on his way back to Chateau Shampoo when he saw Nana's wacky water fountain. And he had an idea. <laughs> Those bottles were just what he needed for his new bristly bean bubble bath. 
Boris crept over to the fountain where Nana slept, turned off the water and helped himself to a bottle. Then another one. Soon he had armfuls of bottles. Oh, Nitz! Boris is spoiling Nana's wacky water fountain! Boris boo-hoo, you're bad right through-hoo! Boris was busy filling up the bottles with bubble bath when he heard someone come in. <gasps> it was Chihuahua, Boise and Minnie. And Nana had woken up. <laughs> <laughs> Boris was hiding. Bye-bye! Hi! Bye. <laughs> thought the wacky water fountain was wonderful. But Nana knew straight away that some bottles were missing. Where could they be? Boise and Minnie said they'd help Nana look for them. They couldn't have gone far. <laughs> Boris couldn't let Nana see him with her bottles. So he ran out from behind the bush. He went into a panic. The kind of panic that makes you trip up and throw oh, oh, bottles. <laughs> I just knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Boris's bubbles were all over Nana's wacky water fountain. <laughs> just then, Mom and Pa arrived. Boris pretended to be pleased to see them. They were pleased to see Boris. Then Nana, Minnie and Boise and Chiwa came back. Boris pretended to be pleased to see them. Then Nana saw her wacky water fountain covered in bubbles. <laughs> Who did that? It wasn't the Ha Ha Harry. It was Boris. That's why he took the bottles to fill them with bubble bath. <laughs> oh, it was so happy. What a kind friend Boris is. It wasn't a wacky water fountain. It was a bristly bean bubbler. Boise was so proud. The Ha Ha Harry started playing with the bubbles. <laughs> Nana laughed so much she couldn't keep her feet on the ground. Up she went. Up. 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 Until Boise managed to help her down again. <laughs> Boris was furious. All his bristly bean bubble bath wasted on the ha ha hairies. One day he'd show them. <laughs> Just you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> I love it when Boris's greedy plans go wrong. Yeah, me too. Quiff, why are you holding your nose? I don't smell that bad. You don't think? Mm. Hey, come on, Whippy Wiggy Wigster, it's bath time. Oh, but I'm too tired for a bath. Not interested. Oh, we don't have any bubble bath. There's nothing wrong with Hairy Berry soap. Come on. What if I don't care about being Wiggy? What if I do? Lucy and this is Rosie. Hello Rosie. Let's put Rosie here. And this is Fizz. Hello 
Fizz and Rosie and Fizz have been very busy today playing with their toys and inside their toy box are lots of clues for today's story. Shall we have a look? There's a washing tub, a soap box, and a peg. It's Rosie and Fizz's washing day and we're going to help them. So are you ready? Let's switch to story time. And we switch to story time by making a big story clock. Can you make a big story clock with me? After three, one, two, three, a big story clock with seconds, minutes and hours and pretend your body is the big hand and put your little hand like this and join in with me. Tick tock it's the story clock it must be time for a story. Tick tock it's the story clock are you ready for a story? Stretch up high, stretch down low Wriggle your fingers, wiggle your toes Tick tock, it's the story clock Hands up, who's ready for a story? Rosie and Fizz were jumping in puddles Small puddles that went splish Bigger puddles that went splosh and then Fizz jumped in an enormous puddle that went splash. Fizz's trousers were covered in mud. Thick, squelchy mud. We shall have to wash them, said Fizz. That sounds fun, said Rosie. And they went to fetch the washing tub. Rosie filled the tub with water. One bucket, two buckets, three buckets, four buckets, five buckets until it was right to the top. Fizz poured in the soap and they mixed it around. Soon the tub was full of suds. That's a lot of suds to wash one pair of trousers, said Fizz. Do we have anything else to wash? Oh yes, said Rosie. We have lots of things. Rosie found a pair of socks a handkerchief and an old scarf to wash. Fizz found one sock. He couldn't find the other one, so Fizz decided to wash the sail from his sailboat. Don't forget your muddy trousers, said Rosie. Fizz had to find another pair of trousers to wear. The only trousers Fizz could find were in his fancy dress box, so he put those on instead. And now everything was ready for washing day. Splish, splash, splosh. Give your clothes a wash. Scrub them until they're clean. Rinse them, spin them, hang them on the line. When the sun comes out, they'll be dry in no time. Soon the tub was full of suds and the bubbles floated up into the sky. Rosie and Fizz forgot about the washing and played bubble pop. Rosie popped one, two, three, four, five bubbles and Fizz popped six. Pop! Mouse wondered where all of the noise was coming from. And with the game of bubble pop and Fizz wearing his fancy dress trousers, Mouse thought there must be a party. There's not a party, said Rosie. It's our washing day and you can help us if you like. Oh yes, please, said Mouse. Rosie fetched the pegs. It was time to hang the washing on the line. There was a pair of Rosie socks, an old scarf, a handkerchief, one sock from Fizz, a pair of muddy trousers and... Oh dear! Bother, said Fizz. We've run out of pegs. I know, 
I'll hang my sail on the branch of a tree. Uh Uh-oh, but the wind whirled and swirled and the sail flew into the sky. Catch it, shouted Fizz. It splashed into the duck pond. Quack! But the wind whooshed it away. It landed on top of Mouse's house. But the wind whooshed it away. And now the sail was nowhere to be seen. Rosie and Fizz searched and searched and searched. They searched until the sun had gone down and the moon had come up. Where could the sail be? Just as they arrived back in the garden, there was a hoot. It was Owl. Hello, Rosie. Hello, Fizz. Fizz, I think this belongs to you, said Owl. It was Fizz's sail. How did you know it was mine? asked Fizz. Because, said Owl, it had your name written on it. Thank you, Owl, said Fizz. What a busy washing day. That night, when all of the washing things were cleared away, Fizz put the sail on his boat and it flapped in the wind. Well done, Rosie, and well done, Fizz, for washing all of your clothes. And now Fizz's trousers were nice and clean. And that was the story of Rosie and Fizz's washing day. It's nearly time for Rosie and Fizz to go, but just before we do, let's stick the soapbox and the peg inside the Rosie and Fizz storybook so they'll always remember their washing day adventure and tell their friends all about it. Thank you for joining us. And why don't you join us next time for another Rosie and Fizz story? I wonder what toys we'll find inside their toy box. We'll see you then. Bye! Shall we stick it in the peg? Let's find a page. Bye!